Hey guys, Dillerbacher here with Tactical Paintball League. Probably wondering, uh, how do we keep track of all these stats? How do we uh, organize all of this? And what do we do on game day? So I'm going to show you today. Every day that you, every uh, game day that you show up, there's really three pieces of paper that uh, help keep track of all the stats for each game. Uh, so on game day, this is what you should have. Head referee game day score sheet. This is um, filled out by the head ref or whoever's organizing the games. And then we have two team rosters. These are given to each team captain to fill out. Um, and so with these three documents, that's how we get all of our stats. They really need to be filled out completely so that uh, the games will count and that we can keep our statistics for our awards later in the season. So I'm just going to go over kind of how to fill them out and what we've done here. Um, team rosters, I'll start with. So in this game here, we have Renegade Mines versus Ghosts. Um, this, so put down your team, obviously. Round one, who's doing what? So Renegade Mines are defending in round one, which obviously means the Ghosts are attacking. Uh, make sure you put down your schedule time. What time are you actually starting at? This will help us keep track of if we're starting late or not. Um, you're going to put down your <clears throat> your players for each position. Medic is Israel, Sniper G43, etc. Why is there a round two player? Well, uh, somebody could get injured. You might need to sub. You might have more than five players. You might have a guy who specializes on offense rather than defense. There's a lot of different reasons. And if you do have a different player, you're going to put their name in here. Um... All right, so the same thing with ghosts. Uh, for this, you know, for this exercise, we're just assuming that they're all the same players here. Okay. Uh, now, I've already filled out this as though the games have, have gone on just to show you what's going on. Now, once the team rosters are filled out, we have the names, then we can fill out uh, the head referee game day score sheet, which really needs to have the field that the game is being played at, the date, and what's the main objective that changes from month to month. So once the team rosters are filled out, the, the whoever's in charge can put down the information as far as the players go. In this case, what happens is, so game one, the attackers go out, um, the head ref is going to keep track of, of what objectives are completed. So in this case, ghosts are attacking first, they go out, they complete the EOD, they did not complete the heavy weapons objective, they did complete the sniper objective, they did complete the main objective. What I do here is whoever completes the main, I'll put their name up here. Um, and down below for the other team. So in this case, EODs were 10, heavy weapons no, snipers were worth 5, so that's 15, and the main is 20, so that makes 35 total points here. Okay, so that's where you would put that. Um, now, the kills and deaths uh, <clears throat> for round 1 when they're attacking. Only the attacking team can complete objectives, so in this case, they got 6 kills and 5 deaths. Now, um, for the ghosts attacking, they don't know how many players they killed, but they do know how many times they died, and same with the Renegade Mines. So, and the refs do too. We were able to keep track of that through collecting uh, armbands and, and uh, just counting the deaths up as well. But we usually go to the teams and ask them how many times they've died, see if that jives with what the refs saw. And if that's right, then Renegade Mines knows, hey, we, we uh, took six total deaths. Then we go to ghosts and say, yo, you guys got six total kills. And so that's how you divvy up, that's how you figure out your kills. So a lot of times you'll get together as a group or as a team and figure out how to distribute your six kills. So that gives you a lot of options. And a lot of times your guys will know, yo, I took out two guys in that situation, or I took out that guy with a rocket, or <clears throat> whatever the case may be. So you can accurately uh, get your kills. Sometimes there's going to be those mystery kills, we don't know who got it, so you can, you know, give that to whoever you want. Now we do keep track of bandages, so whoever's a medic, in this case Scorpion, we keep track of bandages used. That's important. <clears throat> because it goes into our statistics later and we have a top medic and things like that. Um, so in this case, uh, now what happens here is in round one, if one team has six kills, so six kills and five deaths, then that means the other team probably has five kills and six deaths. So, so they do mirror each other in that way. Um, and so we really have the captains get together to make sure that their numbers match too. So as refs, we tell each te team how many kills they have, and we can figure that out and if that jives with both teams right there, and then uh, on, pen, on paper and in pen, make sure it matches as well. So in this case, Renegade Mines, they had the opposite, five kills, six deaths. They also used two bandages, okay? And so those uh, uh, stats are mirrored in the game day score sheet. Now in this one, uh, round two, well, what happened was uh, Renegade Mines would have been attacking, so what they did was they got three kills and four deaths, so they still took more deaths than kills. Let's see how they did on their objectives in this case. 
So Renegade Mines completed EOD, completed Heavy Weapons, completed Sniper, and looks like Jay Perez completed the main objective for a total of 45 points. So what do you do now? Now both rounds are over. You know how many kills and deaths and bandages were used. You know how many total points you have for objectives. Well, really all you do is you add your total kills to the, your objective points. And so if you look here, you'll see uh, the ghosts have six kills in this round, four kills in that round. Um, you go down here, subtract penalty points. What are penalty points? Well, we can subtract penalty points. There's a couple reasons. One, shooting over, over a line. Um, there's a couple reasons we might subtract penalty points. Um, and so we could talk more about that another time. But in this case, no penalty points. So they get all their uh, kills. Uh, six and four, so that's ten total kills. Over here, five and three, that makes eight total kills. So what we do is we add our total kills to our main objective points. That gives a total of 45 points over here, and a total of 53 points to Renegade Mines. So in this case, Renegade Mines wins the game 53 to 45. So this is a good example of how you don't necessarily have to get or, or do get more kills to win the game. It's really about completing your objectives and getting those points as well. Bandages don't come into play in terms of points, but they are uh, recorded for statistics. Now the round three tiebreaker if needed, uh, more information about the tiebreaker if, if you need is in the rules, but we do a single shot elimination tiebreaker round, it's, it's just kills and deaths, no respawns, no rolls, very simple, quick, effective way to end a game in case it's tied at the end here. So I hope this uh, helps you guys in filling out your team rosters and then also uh, filling out your Tactical Paintball League Head Referee Game Day Score Sheet. This has to be completed in order for, for us to get the statistics uploaded to the website. So make sure you can fax this back, you can take a picture of it with your phone and send it um, uh, via email or even text it. Uh, so if you want to text it, uh, send it to me, 480-352-8008 if you want to text your game day score sheet, take a picture and text it to me. Do that. I'll upload it to the website, make it real easy for you. You can obviously email us down here at, uh, or go to our website if you want to talk to us through there. I didn't put the email address. It's tacticalpaintballleague at gmail.com. All one word, tacticalpaintballleague at gmail.com. So, um, thanks guys. Hope this helps. Take care.